for Montclair. I am your host, Amanda Gediosi, and I am joined with some awesome people in the studio today. We got my co-host, Angela Guerrero. Hey, hey what's up? <laughs> we got Emmy Dinovelis, my sportscaster. Hi, Amanda. Hey, we got Ashley Ramos. Welcome to the studio. Hey. Newscaster, <laughs> first show, awesome stuff. And then we have Gwen Straitman, our segment host. Hi. It's going to be an awesome day today, guys. We have a bunch of stuff to talk about. But before we get into all the fun stuff, we have to talk about, you know, some new stuff, some serious stuff. We're going to report on the latest news about the U.S. economy. We're going to talk about the police reform and the Tyree Nichols funeral. And we're going to talk about the firebombing of the New Jersey synagogue. Plus a lot more stuff. But before we can get into that, Ashley, you have a newscast for us. Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Ashley, and welcome to 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. So some breaking news as of this morning. The U.S. is increasing its military presence in the Philippines. Both countries said amid rising fears of a conflict with China over Taiwan, the deal would allow Washington to position military equipment and rotate its troops into a total of nine military base controls by the Philippines. Um, in recognition of Black History Month, Studio Montclair will host an ex ex exhibition that explores the visual artist's impressions of the rhythm and blues musical traditions while celebrating the confluence between music and art in all of its varied manifestations. Paintings, drawings, mixed media, electronics, and digital works of art are all included. Entitled Rhythm and Blues, the first show of the new year will open on Thursday, February 2nd, 2023, if anyone wants to go check it out. A 30-year-old in Sarahville councilwoman was found shot and killed in a car outside her home while the Middlesex County Prosecutor's Office didn't identify her. Several local officials said the victim is, is borough councilwoman in New Duanfort. She was found shot multiple times in the vehicle in the area of Samuel Circle at about 7.20 p.m. and pronounced dead at the scene on Wednesday. A uh, Romanian court on Wednesday upheld a second 30-day detention for the Divisus Influer and former professional kickboxer Andrew Tate, who is held on suspension of organized crime and human trafficking, an official said. And for the weather, today is going to be at a low 23 degrees and a high 40 degrees, and it's looking mostly cloudy. All right. Thank awesome. you. Thank you, Ashley. Y'all, hopefully it gets a little bit warmer. I'm waiting for Puxatani Phil. By the way, happy Groundhog Day, everybody. Oh, my gosh. Yes. yes. Happy Groundhog Day. Big day. I'm hoping Puxatani Phil says it's going to be an early spring. I hope so, too. I'm over this cold already. Mm -hmm. Definitely. <laughs> no late winter. We don't want a late winter. <laughs> no. But anyway, Emmy, sports. Good morning, everyone. I'm Emmy, and we have a wide variety of sports to cover today. Kicking off with a doubleheader last night for Montclair State Sports at Panzer Athletic Center. The Montclair State women's basketball team fell short to the William Patterson Pioneers 56-52. For the men's basketball team, sophomore standout Mike Jackson and senior Steve Freeman both converted 23 points apiece for their team to win 99-81. The men's team is on a six-game winning streak and both teams will hit the road to face the Stockton Ospreys on Saturday. Several, several New Jersey New York teams have been and will be in action this week. The New Jersey Devils will be back on their home ice as they will take on Vancouver Can Canucks at 7.30 p.m. on Monday, February 6th at the Prudential Center. This past Saturday, the New York Islanders defeated the Vegas Golden Knights in an overtime match of 2-1. to one. The Islanders will host the Seattle Kraken at UBS Center, at UBS Arena on 7.30 at 7.30 p.m. on Tuesday, February 7th. Last night, the Brooklyn Nets lost to the Boston Celtics with a final score of 139 to 96. On Saturday at 6 p.m., the Brooklyn Nets will take on the Washington Wizards on their home court at Wells Fargo Center, while the New York Knicks will face off against the Miami Heat tonight at 7.30 and the Los Angeles Clippers at Madison Square Garden at 7 p.m. sharp as on Saturday as well. Finishing with football, the Philadelphia Eagles and the Kansas City Chiefs will take a bye week before their big game coming up on February 12th. Jalen Hurts and Patrick Mahomes are set to make history on this day. They are the first pair of black quarterbacks to face off head-to-head -head and lead their team to glory. Mahomes, will, who became the third quarterback to win the Super Bowl in 2020, is aiming to become the first black quarterback in NFL history to win multiple Super Bowls, while Eagles quarterback Jalen Hurts could become the fourth 
black quarterback to win the Lombard Trophy. Hope everyone is excited that it's almost Friday. Back to you, Amanda. All right, awesome. Thank you so much, Emmy. It feels so weird to say almost Friday. I know, right? I'm so used to We're like used Friday. to Friday vibes. <laughs> yes, but almost Friday. It is Thursday. But yeah, thank you so much for the sports class. You know, sports. But we have a top story for y'all today. New data suggests a promising possibility for the economy. I almost said economy. Econom <laughs> for the economy. <laughs> economy that the U.S. avoids big job losses. According to the New York Times, American workers are getting smaller raises. Counterintuitively, that may be good news for the economy and for hopes that the United States can avoid a recession. Some encouraging signs have emerged on, the, on that front lately. Inflation has moderated significantly over the past six months, though it remains too high. The job market has proved remarkably strong despite high profile layoffs in tech and a few other sectors. Overall, unemployment remains at a half-century low. Data released by the Labor Department yesterday showed only a slight increase in layoffs in December. We'll get fresh, fresh data on unemployment tomorrow when the government releases its monthly job report. All right. Not bad. All right. I guess we shall see tomorrow. We shall see. Also, to be determined. Yes. To be determined. Also, I would just like to say, Pakistani Phil is going to say something soon y'all soon <laughs> yes Sorry, so three nervous. minutes oh my gosh i'm so nervous excited i'm getting nervous like have we had an early have him announced early spring recently no right no, it's been a so. minute failing me for the past couple of years come on day. phil no i don't know i'm feeling it this year guys <laughs> phil. God, she's a good name. <laughs> but anyway moving on yes yeah, we're moving on to some serious stuff. So a calls for police reform in Tyree Nichols funeral. So a fam some family and friends are unfortunately saying goodbye to Tyree Nichols, who was a part of police brutality in Memphis, Tennessee. The mother of Nichols, Ro Rovon Wells, says, quote, the only thing that's keeping me going is that I truly believe that my son was sent here on assignment from God, end quote. Vice President Kamala Harris and Reverend Al Sharpton were present in the ceremony. Were present in the ceremony and gave emotional speeches about police reform. Harris said, "And quote, it was not in the interest of keeping the public safe because one must ask: was not was it not in the interest of keeping the public safe that Tyree Nichols would be with us today?" End quote. Sharpton criticized the actions of the Memphis police and thought they were acting like criminals. Sharpton said, quote, you don't fight crime by becoming criminals yourself. You don't stand up to thugs in the street becoming thugs yourself. You don't fight gangs by becoming five armed men against an arm unarmed man. It's not true. It, it ain't the police. That's punks. End quote. You guys, this is serious stuff right here. I don't even know. Like, yeah, when I heard about this story a couple of days ago, you know, my heart broke truly. I mean, I, well, when I heard about the story, first of all, I heard that Tyree was just taking pictures of the sunset, you know, minding his own really? business. He wasn't even doing anything wrong, not at all. And the police just, you know, took things way out of proportion, obviously, with how it ended up and i just think that it's really heartbreaking honestly. it's so heartbreaking i literally i cried when i heard about the story and i i don't cry about the news a lot but you know this this really got to me this was emotional for me just because mm -hmm. someone was literally minding their own business and it was five people to one person i just think i, I don't know to me that it's so horrible it's so horrible to see that this is happening i um i was literally just speaking with our assistant producer victor right now and just saying like i've heard about like I heard the headline but I didn't see the details because like I just I'm honest like I just completely avoided all the news this week because I've just been hearing negative thing behind the other behind the other mm -hmm. but now that I'm just reading this article for the first time like the, are we really ha going to have to go through this again and again another innocent life taken and yeah. from my understanding weren't they all his own kind yes yes so that's it another big question mark like what now it's just like abuse of power exactly it, it's hard it i don't know how do you how do you guys feel about this subject? yeah it's just so horrible like i feel like it's just non-stop news about just police brutality and like no matter what people do no matter what people like try and stop it like mm -hmm. people the police just don't stop and it's just so horrible yeah yeah i think it's very unfortunate with what is happening but also the fact that the cops weren't they like 
um, held for 24 hours and then they were released. Am I wrong? Um, you know, I actually want to look that up because I don't want to say anything wrong. Right. I'm not, I'm not too sure actually, but regardless, if that is the case, that is very upsetting. I want to get that charge. Yeah. I want to, I want to look this up. Uh, I mean, I th- I think that might be true. Right now, I can't find it. It's still like a developing story. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm. We're still finding things out as we go. But honestly, I I just think that something has to be done. Obviously. Oh yeah, absolutely. And especially with the people. Those are the people that are supposed to be. You know, you're not supposed to be afraid of them, at all. Exactly. You're and not I, supposed to be afraid of the police. Yeah, and I feel like after everything that's been coming out, but the past few years, like it's getting harder and harder not to be. So I'm hoping yeah. that like there can be a change from starting with them because we need to see that in order to feel comfortable and feel safe. Because when you hear about more stories like these, then then you get nervous. It's like, who, who are you going to call? Oh yeah, because who's going to be next? Exactly. It's yeah. hard, but my heart, the prayers go out to that Tyree Nichols family. Absolutely. Because it, it's truly devastating. But moving on, we're going to be talking about a man arrested in attempted firebombing of New Jersey synagogue. U.S. Attorney Philip R. Selinger said a man has been charged for his alleged attempt to firebomb a North Jersey synagogue. Nicholas Malandetros, 26 of Clifton, is accused of lighting a homemade explosive device before throwing it at the front entrance of Temple Neretamid in Bluefield early Sunday morning. The device did not go off. Selinger said, quote, no one should find that their lives are at risk by exercising their faith. The defendant is alleged to have gone to the synagogue in the middle of the night and maliciously attempted to damage and destroy it using a firebomb. Wow. Listen, I, this, this was a good week not to listen to the news, Angela. No, it's, seriously. It's really, it's de- it's devastating. It's sad to hear all of these things that are going on just for people, first of all, being themselves or mm-hmm. believing in their religion. I, I just think, you know what is going on it's in the just crazy I, I mean we touched on a story last semester about a man who literally had plans of bombing uh you know temples of of religion i mean all around the garden state all around bergen county and mm-hmm. Pasea county and luckily he got caught yeah but i mean think about it if there's one person like this and with so much of the anti-semitism mm-hmm. issues i mean i i honestly like there's definitely more people out there and i think it's something that needs to have a lot more investigation you know how can we yes. track these down mm-hmm. how can we see the signs because it's it's starting to multiply agreed mm-hmm. and what's scary about it is like you hear these stories and you think oh okay this isn't you know it's not relevant to me because it's not mm-hmm. happening by me but you know this is new jersey this was you know someone from clifton that's that's really close, really close. so i don't know I, I just think people need to be more aware and like yeah definitely keep like stay alert yes because it's getting closer and closer it could happen to anyone god forbid but i'm just sending my prayers to those who are involved with that synagogue you know yeah it's definitely not probably not comfortable to go back after this and it, it's hard because i i know we've talked about this before but you know when people this is a whole nother topic that i'm really going to be bringing up when people like that are influential such as kanye west say things yes mm-hmm. it's going to make people you know do things that i agree are not right so you know it's just a hard situation i i really believe that people like that should not have the ability to voice their yeah opinions. because there's so many people that look up to him like with any other public figure and they're going to unfortunately go with whatever their opinions and decisions are whether they're good or bad so really making sure that we stop giving these people a platform exactly 100 mm-hmm. percent. i 100 percent agree with you yeah for sure and um Well, speaking of people, of public figures, our next story. So the FBI searches Biden's vacation home and no classified documents. So the FBI searched President Joe Biden's vacation home in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware, without turning up without turning up any classified documents. The latest turn in an extraordinary series of searches of his and his pre pre, 7 a.m. pre predecessors i believe i'm pronouncing it correctly predecessors predecessors thank you amanda predecessors properties investigators searched his former office at a washington think tank that bears his name in november but it isn't clear whether they took anything 
The Biden searches conducted with his blessing have come as investigators work to determine how classified information from his time as a senator and vice president came to wind up in his home and former office. Law enforcement searches of property are are a routine part of criminal probes, but there is nothing ordinary about the FBI scouring a sitting president's home. Wow. I mean, this is bringing me back to when, so they, were when they were investigating Trump. That's what I was thinking, too. That's the first thing I thought when you started reading that. I was like, wow, this is giving me Trump and his vacation home in Florida, Mar-a-Lago. That was th- that was literally like the topic all sem- last semester. He was just there was always an oh, update yeah. on that investigation consistently. <laughs> now it's Biden. Yeah. <laughs> I-, I wonder what they're going to find. Listen, I mean. Yeah, I mean. Go off, I guess. Yeah, exactly <laughs> how these papers came up to into his house now i mean i I don't know yeah how are these presidents getting all of these uh classified documents anyway and why are they hiding them in their vacation homes why is it always the va- it's always True. the vacation homes yeah. wasn't it trump's it was his vacation home i think as well or maybe one of the houses he owns but yeah. it's always oh my gosh it's just always i wonder always what kind vacation. of like documents they could be what are they th- it's like, vacation what could they even take yeah it's vacation. Why do you need? You don't need doc. Uh, you know, legal documents. You need pina coladas. No. <laughs> you don't need any of that. I mean, it's in Delaware. I mean, yeah. Um, how much vacation are you getting in Delaware? That's kind of true. That's true. <laughs> but what's funny is like, you know, at this point, if, if you're gonna learn from Trump's mistakes, you might as well just put the documents somewhere else, right? I mean, no, seriously. Oh God. But yeah. I don't even know what to say about this I, I'm either. With- it's basically a copy and paste. Just switch yeah. the present. <laughs> very true. All right. We're going to take a very short break. But when we come back, we're going to be talking about whales. We're whales, Stay literally. Hey, hey, you're listening to WMSC Upper Monk.
All right, we are back with the morning buzz on 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. Guys, Puxatawney Phil is almost coming out. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Almost there. Very exciting stuff. But we are back. We're going to be talking about the these whale deaths. I just read the headline. Very, I'm sad now. So yeah. let's get into it and just see what we're talking about a little bit. So New Jersey mayors raise alarm for immediate moratorium on offshore wind development after finding a string of dead whales in the last few weeks the mayors of 12 jersey city requested thorough investigation done by federal and state officials that proves a wind turbine infrastructure is not responsible for the whale deaths occurring on the shore in a letter written by the 12 mayors it says end quote while we are not opposed to clean energy, we are concerned about the impacts these offshore wind projects may already be having on our environment. On Monday, a large humpback whale was found in Nassau County in New York. This is the 10th whale found on the East Coast since December. Five of the whales have been found on New Jersey beaches. Guys, this is so sad. I did hear That's about so this a couple um, weeks ago about another incident. Like they're just popping up yeah i mean really? i feel like it's this horrible. isn't a thing that should be happening you no really it's not normal of, you don't really hear of beached whales a lot you don't even hear of like whales period like in new jersey that's like true. that's <laughs> why i'm just so concerned like since when and why are they like coming up off up shore like dead that's really sad I'm so confused and i feel so bad and i'm such a big fan of the ocean i love the ocean and this is just like heartbreaking to watch because like if like the whale population's like dying off then it's like what's gonna happen next with this food chain that's, that's very true, true. that's true uh, yeah i'm i'm sad now like you know whales when i was a kid used to be my favorite animals i don't know why i just thought they were really cute especially they're so what adorable are they, what are they called are they the killer whales the yeah the black and white yeah. ones i yeah. think they're kid little killer whales oh my god see you know you think about shamu and now i'm sad you know i love whales so i hope we're gonna figure out what's going on you know if it is these wind turbines I, I i wonder i don't you know i don't really know but i'm hoping they could figure out what's happening with these whales because i don't i don't want to see that i don't want to hear about that no no it's it's really heartbreaking it and is. it's it's not it's it's far from normal very true yeah you never you don't really hear too much about like beached animals especially in new jersey in new jersey on the especially jersey shore, you never really never hear about that but you know this summer when i was going to the beach I, a lot of like uh sea animals i guess ocean animals were getting closer to the shore and you know i you don't really see that too much so i hope i just hope it changes for the better i mean a lot of it has to do just with our environment these days i mean mm -hmm. from the weather like I, I mean the weather speaks for itself you know it all affects it it's it's a cycle so yeah, i don't know we'll see what happens that would be so crazy to like be on the beach and then imagine you just see a whale just sitting there like it's really oh, oh i could not do that i would freak out and then that dead whale attracts oh. other animals like sharks and it that, does yeah that'll pull in like mm -hmm. fish and all that and it's just like it must be a crazy process to get them off the beach oh, oh yeah. yeah you have to do what are those cool things you know yeah because mm -hmm. well, they're they're, they're huge yeah. they're and very heavy yeah that is true well hopefully we won't be hearing of this too much anymore yeah hopefully it's not something that we have to that like that comes up again yes hopefully not oh yeah yeah but yeah so moving on to our next story so this one's for our red hawks here at montclair state university so montclair state university's it department changes the canvas login so in case you've missed it the canvas login page has changed once bearing a high angle shot of the campus landscape as its background the page is now blank with the montclair state university logo and name at the top left corner however the way students log in has not changed over the winter break, Montclair State's Information Technology Division made the switch to Forged Rock Access Management for secure campus-wide logins. The IT department wanted to clarify that there was no incident that sparked the decision. 
Andrew Meese, university spokesperson, said, quote, our IT division continuously makes upgrades to all solutions used by our community whenever new and more robust technologies become available. This change was simply part of moving to a more reliable, more secure single sign-on platform. On January 4th, the Canvas login page layout officially changed. Emails were sent out before the start of spring 2023 about the expected change. Despite the outreach, some students did not take notice of the change to the Canvas login page this semester. I don't really like it that much, to be honest. I hate it. I have to sign... I have to sign on every time. I thought it was a like a glitch, like, oh, I wasn't signed in. Maybe I didn't like save the tab correctly. I have to sign in every single time. I just used to click it and it would just bring me straight to my Canvas login. Maybe I'm Canvas lazy. Page. Maybe I'm lazy. Maybe. <laughs> I hate it. Every single time, you know, I, I look up Canvas, brings me right to Nest. Right to your page, like, everything. I don't, I don't want to go to Nest. I'm looking up Canvas to go to Canvas. If I want to go to mm-hmm. Nest, I look up Nest. I don't know. Maybe this is definitely a first world problem, Montclair State problem. I don't know. Yeah. Your password is not that hard. <laughs> I, I know my password. It's just, oh, yeah. I know my password. It's, it's just annoying. typing it in uh-huh. every single mm-hmm. time. I used to just click it and all my classes would come up like right away. It was yeah. Convenient. I'm not going to lie. I, I didn't even notice. No? I really? No idea. I hate it. <laughs> I also it's hate so that. annoying. Just that those two seconds, like, might have to type in my username and password. Also, I don't know if any of y'all have noticed, but you ha- every single time you want to go to one of your Gmail accounts, Google, you have to do the two-step. Yeah. The two-step. Yeah. Oh, it's the worst. Oh, that I hate. Because if I don't have my phone on me, I'm like, Ugh. I have to get up. I have to get my phone now. Wow. See, this sounds ve- like oh, I'm complaining with the sense. stories we just heard. Like, I should not be complaining. No, so- yeah, we honestly shouldn't compared to what the other stories we've been like reporting. Yeah. But it, it is. Yeah, it's annoying. Yeah, I, I definitely <laughs> noticed the change like maybe like what, two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. Also, guys, I- I'm really sad right now. I have I have an update. <gasps> <gasps> no. What's the tawny filth? sees his shadow no. six more weeks uh-huh. of winter again y'all uh, you know what every year this groundhog is saying that it's gonna be more weeks of winter you know i'm not trusting him <laughs> i say we let him out into the wild live his life and get a new groundhog yeah i'm banning Puxatani fell like i don't well, there, there are i'm just ones. honest right now like i just like no isn't isn't he the the uh pennsylvania one isn't there a new jersey he is the I pennsylvania Puxatani. So Philip. maybe maybe we shouldn't be trusting Pennsylvania. That's, That's true. true. That's very true. Six more weeks of winter. This is not cool. I'm not, yeah, I'm, I'm not actually a... devastated right now, but I guess I'll get over it. We're gonna take a quick. Oh, actually, wait. Lara in the chat is saying Phil is an icon, and she's a Phil stan. You know, I used to be a Philip stan, but now he's telling now me he's six more weeks of winter. Giving us six more weeks. So now I hate him. Anyway, we're gonna take a very quick break. But when we come back, there is gonna be an interview. So stay tuned for that, and we will be right back. When it comes to vaping, the truth. Hi, can you hear me? I, you guys are muted.
Good morning. Does and we have an interview, very exciting stuff. So yes, we do. We have Dr. Katrina Bulkley, the acting dean for the College of Education and Human Services. Her new study shows the organizations overseeing America's charter schools making equality in education more of a priority. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited for this. Yeah, I'm excited too. All, All right. right. Um. Okay. To start off, my first question is, what are charter schools and what significance do they have in our education system? That is a great question. So charter schools, when we think about public schools, we often think about schools where there's a school district and the school district in New Jersey, it's mostly towns or cities. And then the school district runs schools in that town or city. Um, but charter schools, and we have a lot of them in New Jersey, charter schools are authorized or allowed to operate by another organization, and they operate with an, a lot of flexibi more flexibility um, and more, we talk, we talk a lot about autonomy. So they can make different kinds of decisions because they're not a part of a school district. And in New Jersey, they are authorized actually by the state of New Jersey. So in, for example, in Newark, I wanna say 40 to 50% of students who are in a public school are actually in a public charter school and not in a um, district run school. And one more thing about charter schools that's important to know, particularly for this research, is that um, many of them serve student populations and communities that have often um, faced challenges in, in public education. So um, they often serve lower income communities and students. They often serve students of color. And so that's part of what motivated this research was really knowing that charter schools are serving students who haven't always been served well by public schools. Sometimes they've been served wonderfully by traditional public schools, but sometimes they haven't been served as well. And so we wanted to always be thinking about how charter schools might be serving the students differently. Did I answer your whole question? I'm sorry. Uh, that was perfect, honestly. Because I, before this, I've heard of charter schools. I have a charter school in my town, but I didn't really know. So thank you for that. You bet. Awesome. All right, then. So for our next question, what made you realize that research needed to be done on this topic? Okay, so there's been great question. There's been a lot of research that's been done on charter schools since they first came on the scene in the 1990s. But most of that research has really focused on the schools themselves. And I actually was, I believe, maybe the first scholar to write about charter school authorizers back in 1999, feeling old, um, because in different states, different kinds of organizations can do that authorizing, can have somebody wants to run a charter school, they submit an application to an authorizer, and then the authorizer can approve or not approve that application. And based on that decision, that charter school may get millions of dollars in public funding. So in New Jersey, it's just the state, but in other states, um, you can have charter school authorizers that might be a local school district. You can have sometimes nonprofit organizations that can authorize charter schools. And so these authorizers can be very important in deciding which schools operate 
and in deciding how they operate and in holding them accountable. So I really thought, and my colleagues thought, that it was important for us to understand more about their role in determining what schools are available to, to kids, to kids and, and, right. and adolescents. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yeah. So for our next question, according to the press release from Montclair State's website, it says, quote, authorizers are explicitly stated goals surrounding equity to varying degrees, with some showing no interest in it at all. Does your research show if charter schools set their students up for long term success? That, that's a great question. And let me tell you a little bit more about what we were looking at in the study, um, because that is exactly the question that we're trying to help understand. So we know that there are some things that schools can do, including charter schools, that are going to better set up um, students for success, particularly the students that, that my research really focuses on, you know, low-income students, in, students in communities that, are, that have a large low-income population and, and a large low-income population of students of color. So here are a couple examples of what schools can do that can really better serve that broad population of students. So one is there's a lot of research about congruence. So this idea that if you have teachers in a school who share a racial or ethnic background with the students, and this is particularly true for, for Black students, when you have Black teachers, Black students tend to do better. And that's important. Mm -hmm. And there are lots of other things we do at the university mm -hmm. to try to encourage and excite students and especially students of color be, to become teachers because we know that's incredibly impactful. And another thing that schools can do that is particularly important for lower income students is we know that lower income families often struggle with, um, with childcare. You know, childcare is very expensive. They may not have flexible work hours. And so schools can have different ways to extend the school day, right? So they can make, whether it's clubs after school, whether it's having a longer day overall, whether it's before care or after care, there are lots of different ways that schools can make it easier for low-income families without charging those families money to, to be able to navigate their child being in school and caring for their child and being able to meet their other, their work responsibilities. Yeah. So one of the things that we wanted to do in this study is we looked to see our charter school applicants paying attention to those two things. Right. right. And then we looked at the authorizer and we said, are the authorizers asking about those things? Are the authorizers asking about racial congruence? Are they asking about how are you gonna make sure that the, the teachers and educators in your school are excited and to work with the students in that school. And we asked, and we said, are they asking, are you going to extend the school day? And, you know, and what we found is that authorizers who asked about those things were more likely to get applications that responded to those things. So it was more likely that you would have a charter school application where the, the people who wanted to operate the charter school said, we're gonna have an extended day if the authorizer asked them about that. Hmm. So we said authorizers can actually have a bigger impact than they <clears throat> do because if you're trying to get someone to approve an application that's going to allow you to have access to millions of dollars potentially in public funding, that authorizer has a lot of influence. And so if the authorizer says equity is really important to the work that we do, and we're going to ask you about these things, even if we don't require you to do them, simply asking them is going to encourage the, the organization that wants to run that charter school to think about and to say, huh, yeah, we should be doing that. So we see this as a really important space that we haven't really looked at it in research as much that can have a big impact on, on how well 
on how well schools serve serve students and particularly students who, as I said, have have historically not always had great success in traditional public schooling. Right. Yeah. I I honestly love love that, especially with like the child care, you know, yeah. really making sure that kids get involved in school. That's super important. And honestly, it, it leads to our next question. Professor, um, you know, with all of these practices that you have in your research and, you know, getting kids involved in clubs and, and you know, making sure that they're interacting with their teachers and even that the teachers are really uh, making sure that they're interacting with their students. Do you believe that more uh, schools in our nation and even universities should follow in charter schools footsteps on making equality more of a priority? Yeah. Well, one thing that I would say is that there are lots and lots of public school districts that do make a equity and equality very central to what they do. So, um, and there are a lot of charter schools that do as well. I would say though that really thinking about these practices, these kinds of practices, it's important for schools and school districts and charter schools to think about, but I would say it's also really important that states be thinking about these issues because the state government um, can do things and often does things. So right now we have a state government that is really trying to accelerate the available of good quality early child care or, or early childhood education so that there's, there's free preschool available. We know that that's incredibly important for kids educationally and it's really important for families, especially low-income families that might not otherwise be able to access early child care. Um, we know that having a diverse set of teachers available in schools, and this is in schools that serve students of color, but it's also really important in schools that don't for, for white students to have opportunities to work closely with teachers of color. And those are things that often students of color may not be less likely to go into teaching because mm -hmm. of cost, because they need to be making more money. So the state can influence um, the availability of scholarships and learning opportunities and also can influence the pay. Um, so yes, districts can and many districts do center equity and charter schools do center equity. So there's that piece, but there's also the, the the state role in there that's really important and the federal government, which does a lot of work here too. I know I'm going on and on, sorry. No, 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 it's no. great. Honestly, this is this is really great information. I think it's great. Yeah, no, this is very enlightening. I, I didn't know a lot about charter schools before this, but I would like to say, you know, it's truly incredible that there is a place for students who wouldn't be able to get these opportunities normally. Yeah. Uh, to have these opportunities to succeed and you know, I, I really appreciate that. But one yeah, if I could just say, sorry, very oh quickly. Oh my gosh, you're fine. Um, I just want to be really clear that there are some charter schools that do this, but that there are also, we work closely, for example, as a university with the Newark public school, the Newark mm -hmm. district schools. Mm. And they, the amount of care and love um, that goes into thinking about how to serve well the students of Newark and the students, I mean, if you guys know Newark, you know that there are different parts of Newark yes. have really different student populations, right? And so mm -hmm. the amount, I can tell you, getting to work with those educators, the amount of time and thought that they put into how do we serve the students in the different parts of our community well is really inspiring. So I, so yes, charter schools can play a, can play a role and sometimes play an important role. But the district schools also, in many cases, are doing some amazing work. That, that honestly, that's very nice to hear, and I'm happy that you know schools are taking they're taking an initiative. Yeah. the kids are like sponges. I always like to say that they so you want to make sure that they're absorbing all the good, all the positive, because that's what's going to build them to be these future leaders of tomorrow. Yeah, 100%. absolutely, absolutely, yeah. and yeah, and we have there are. I will just say, I, I know we probably are running over time, but um, people are right now, not as many people are expressing interest, not as many college students in becoming teachers. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's worrisome because teachers are incredibly important, but I think people also don't realize 
always how much joy there is in teaching, Mm -hmm. how much becoming a teacher and being in that classroom and being and shaping students is it's joyful. It's exciting work. You are doing something real and, you know, you get some time off in the summer. (laughs) <laughs> you know, yes. you have, you have some flexibility different kinds of flexibility in your life um that really can help you to have a really good balanced life and um and whatever kind of school you work in it really is um it's a wonderful profession it, it's a wonderful profession and and when you talk to students who are preparing to be teachers their excitement is contagious Mm-hmm. It's just absolutely contagious. It is being a teacher and educator. It, it's very rewarding. I work at a summer camp for the past six summers and just being able to, it, it, it's honestly quite similar. Just being able to teach these yeah. kids and, you know, watch them grow. It's just, it's really rewarding and an awesome experience. But one last question for you. If you have an important message to the students and teachers about the importance of this research, what would it be? Um, The importance of this research is that there are a lot of things that we can do actually in the policy area that policy can't always tell tell schools, do this, do this, do this. But there are what we call nudges. There are things that little things that we can do to encourage policy and to encourage educators to move in the direction that we think is important. And so this research shows how even without more money, even without um, strict policies, that these charter school authorizers can actually make a difference in how much attention applicants that want to run schools are paying to really meeting the needs of the students that they serve. And I think that that idea is incredibly, incredibly powerful in lots of different ways, that there are lots of ways that we can nudge, that we can encourage um, lots of different kinds of organizations and individuals to pay more attention to equity um, because we know that when schools are equitable, when students thrive across a whole range of, of income levels, of racial and ethnic backgrounds, that that everyone wins. Everyone wins when all students thrive. And so we need to be looking at every angle that we can. And this is one of the reasons why, honestly, I'm so proud to be a part of Montclair State University is because we are a place where all students thrive often at levels that far exceed um, how how students demographically might thrive in in other institutions. So it's a tremendous uh, privilege to be here and and to, and to get to talk to students like you. That's, that's, that's a highlight always. Yeah. Well, thank you. I really appreciate it. And we really enjoyed learning about yeah. everything today, but absolutely. Thank you so much for being on the show. You, yeah. You we're... bet. I, I was delighted to get the inv- invitation and uh, Laura, I can't see you, but thank you so much for inviting me as well. So it was, it was great meeting you both. Yeah. Well, we are very thankful for the opportunities here at Montclair State and we really appreciate you. But for more about Dr. Bulkley's research, it can be found on the Montclair State website along with reachcenter.org. But again, Professor, thank you so much for your time this morning. We really appreciate it. You bet. Have a great day, everyone. You too. Thank you too. Hey, well, that was awesome. I feel really enlightened. I learned a lot. Yeah, honestly. Yeah, that was that was that was really good. All right. But thank you again to the professor for joining us. And we're going to take a really quick break. And when we come back, we're going to have our segment. So stay tuned for that. There are some things that I don't want you to know.
the morning buzz here on 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. You know, it's 7.54, almost 8. Almost 8. We're wow. We're almost there. But Gwen, we have some segments. Yes, stuff. Miss Gwen. Hello. I'm Gwen Streitman, and this is my segment on uh, local music, arts, and just stuff here at Montclair. Yeah. So here's what we have for WMSC Promotions. As a reminder, our first giveaway of the semester is Colony House. The concert will take place on March 7th at Irving Plaza. The Colony House is an indie rock band from Tennessee made by brothers Will and Caleb Chapman, along with members Scott Mills and Park Cottrell. The giveaway will be open from February 12th to February 18th. Our next giveaway of the semester is Emotional Oranges. The concert will take place on March 10th at Brooklyn Steel. Emotional Oranges is an R&B group from California. The giveaway will be open from February 19th to February 25th. Our next giveaway of the semester is Freddie Dread. The concert will take place on March 15th at Music Hall of Williamsburg. Freddie Dread is a hip-hop artist from Ontario, Canada. The giveaway will be open from February 26th to March 4th. To participate in these giveaways, you can visit our website, wmscradio.com. For Montclair events, the Montclair State University Department of Theater and Dance presents Everybody by Brandon Jacobs Jenkins. It's a wildly fresh, seriously funny, and deeply human meta story that asks the big questions about what it means to live and what it means to die, if anything, and how we might travel through the world with a bit more grace and compassion. The, place, the play will take place in Life Hall Studio 1200 and will open on February 16th. For local shows, one local venue is the Meat Locker in Montclair, New Jersey. Tonight, February 2nd, the Meat Locker has an indie concert with performances by Pillow Wind, The Cult of Chunk, John Cause, and Lightheaded. The doors will open at 8 p.m. and it is open to all ages. Another local venue is Crossroads in Garwood, New Jersey. Tonight, February 2nd, Crossroads has a, has a rock concert with performances by Alvia, The Azores, and Soul Vacancy. The doors were open at 7 p.m. and it is open to all ages. And while this isn't a local venue, Screenager, a local band, is performing at the Broadway in New York City. The concert is this Friday, February 3rd. Doors open at 7.30 p.m. and it is 21 plus. And then my favorite. So in new music releases, Real Friends released their new EP, Six Feet. Rosalia released her new song, LLYLM. And then we had a Blady and Skrillex collab. They released their new song, Real Spring. Samir released her new album, Honey. Falling in Reverse released their new single, Watch the World Burn. Fall Out Boy released two new songs, Heartbreak Feels So Good and Love from the Other Side. Quinny released her new EP, Flounder. And then Boy Genius released three songs from their new album, $20. Emily, I'm sorry, and True Blue. And then in some tour announcements, the Adjacent Festival announced their set list with headliners Paramore, Bleachers, Jimmy Eat World, Blink-182, Turnstile, and Japanese Breakfast. The festival is May 27th to the 28th in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Fall Out Boy announced their tour called So Much for Tour Dust, a play on their album titled So Much for Stardust. The tour will be coming to New Jersey at the PNC Bank Arts Arena on August 5th and Freedom Mortgage Pavilion on August 6th. Boy Genius and Claro announced their tour with Dijon and Barty Strange. The tour will be coming to New York at Forest Hill Stadium on June 17th. And then yesterday, Beyonce announced her world tour. The tour will be coming to New Jersey at MetLife Stadium on July 29th. Wow, lots stuff. of good stuff. Yeah. That Freddie Dread, I think I'm going to have to enter that myself. Yes, it's pretty it. cool. And Beyonce? You miss Beyonce, you know, that's going to be a good... I, mm, I actually saw be Beyonce. Crazy. I actually forgot about really? that. Really? <laughs> it was very wow. random. Me and my best friend, um, we saw Beyonce. You know, I love concerts, so it doesn't matter who you are. Even if I don't listen to your music, if it's a concert, I'm going to go. No, for real. Might as well, yeah. Yeah, but thank you so much, Gwen. Thanks, Gwen. That was awesome. Yeah, that is awesome. I love hearing about all the local bands and stuff. But yeah, for real, concerts are so fun. 
really quick speed round what is everyone's favorite concert they've ever been to oh my gosh uh i can't go first i okay, have to I'll think about first. it <laughs> um i saw luke bryan when i was in high school and john party and sam smith opened for him i'm a country girl um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. nice awesome. mine's gonna have to be um mine's gonna have to be one direction it was their last Classic. tour their last show wow zane wasn't on my t-shirt <laughs> that had to be my favorite one though good memories yeah i also saw one direction with uh five seconds of five summer. seconds of summer wow yeah, that's crazy lineup. yeah they had a good lineup they did i probably i went to the reggaeton concert and bad bunny was there so oh. probably that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you go. You know, Victor's happy about that one. He loves Bad Bunny. Oh, Victor loves Bad Bunny. Gwen, what's your fave? Um, I saw my favorite artist Mitski over the summer, and that was that was a crazy good concert. Nice. That's awesome. For well, so for Lara, Lara said in the chat her My Chemical Romance concert mm. was her favorite concert, which we all know Lara loves My Chemical Romance. So that was definitely very fun for her. <laughs> but my favorite concert. Probably has to be the Pierce the Veil concert I went to this summer because they were they were just headlining the show and I just went for them. Aww. Let's be real, but they've been my one of my favorite bands since I was fourteen years old. So getting to see them live was a crazy experience. That must have been like a full circle moment. Oh, oh I was going crazy. I was in the mosh pit and everything, and you know, like, yeah. oh really? Yeah. You went to the mosh pit. I Whoa, did. amazing! It was a crazy experience, but. We have now made it. It is eight o'clock. It's messy hour, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, it is messy hour here on 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. We, you know, we're going to get crazy. But before we get crazy, we have a newscast and a weather forecast. So, Ashley, it's the same thing as the first time. We're ready for the news. Hi, everyone. This is Ashley again. Welcome, welcome. Um, all right. Got a little bit of a yeah. All right. So, but well, before we get into the newscast, we could do the sports cast first. You yeah. know, I'm I'm ready for some sports. You know, I'm a sports girl myself. But Amanda, you know, I got you. With yeah. That. All right. All right. <laughs> if you're just tuning in now, good morning, everyone. I'm Emmy, and we have a wide variety of sports to cover today. Kicking off with the doubleheader last night for Montclair State Sports at Panzer Athletic Center. The Montclair State women's basketball team fell short to the William Patterson Pioneers 56-52. For the men's basketball team, sophomore standout Mike Jackson and St senior Steve Freeman both converted 23 points each for their team to win 99-81. The men's team is on a six-game winning streak, and both teams will hit the road to face the Stockton Offspring on Saturday. Several New Jersey and New York teams have been and will be in action this week. The New Jersey Devils will be back on their home ice as they will take on Vancouver Canucks at 7.30 p.m. on Monday, February 6th at the Prudential Center. This past Saturday, the New York Islanders defeated the Vegas Golden Knights in an overtime match of 2-1. The Islanders will host the Seattle Kraken at UBS Arena at 7.30 p.m. on Tuesday, February 7th. Last night, the Brooklyn Nets lost to the Boston Celtics with a final score of 139 to 96. On Saturday at 6 p.m., the Brooklyn Nets will take on the Washington Wizards on their home court at Wells Fargo Center, while the New York Knicks will face off against the Miami Heat tonight at 7.30 p.m. and the Los Angeles Clippers at Madison Square Garden at 7 p.m. sharp on Saturday as well. Finishing with football, the Philadelphia Eagles and the Kansas City Chiefs will take a bye week before their big game coming up on February 12th. Jalen Hurts and Patrick Mahomes are set to make history on this day. They are, a pair, they are the first pair of black quarterbacks to face off head-to-head -head and lead their team to glory. Mahomes, who became the third black quarterback to win the Super Bowl in 2020, is aiming to become the first black quarterback in NFL history to win multiple Super Bowls, while Eagles quarterback Hurts could become the fourth black quarterback to win the Lombardi Trophy. Hope everyone's excited, but it's almost Friday. Back to you, Amanda. Thank you so much, Emmy. Listen. I'm no Philly fan, not at all. But it's gonna be a crazy game. Mm -hmm. You never, you see. I guess I'm excited to see what happens. She's a Jets fan. I am a Jets fan. Me too. Oh, yeah. All right, Ashley. Thank you. Sorry for your disappointment. Listen, so there's only a few of us, but you know we're the proud. Listen, I'm never gonna change my team because the second I change my team is the year they're gonna start winning. Okay. <laughs> I'm always gonna be a Jets fan through and through. But thank you so much again, Emmy, Ashley. Be ready for that newscast. Yes, I'm ready. So for some breaking news. 
The U.S. is increasing its military presence in the Philippines. Both countries said amid rising fears of a conflict with China over Taiwan, the deal would allow Washington to position military equipment and rotate its troops into a total of nine military bases controlled by the Philippines. In recognition of Black History Month, Studio Montclair will host an exhibition that explores the visual artist impressions of the rhythm and blues musical traditions while celebrating the confluence between music and art in all of its varied manifestations. Paintings, drawings, mixed media, electronic, and digital works of art are all included. Entitled Rhythm and Blues, the first show of the new year will open Thursday, February 2nd, 2023. A 30-year-old Sarah Ville Councilwoman was found shot and killed in a car outside of her home. While the Middlesex County Prosecutor's Office didn't identify her, several local officials said the victim is Borough Councilwoman Inus Duomfor. She was found shot multiple times in the vehicle in the area of Samuel Circle at about 7.20 p.m. and pronounced dead at the scene on Wednesday. A Romanian court on Wednesday upheld the second 30-day detention for the Divis's influence and former pro professional kickboxer Andrew Tate, who was held on suspension of organized crime and human trafficking, an official said. And for today's weather, it is at a low 23 degrees and a high 40 degrees, looking mostly cloudy, so just stay warm. All right, awesome. Thank Beautiful you newscast. So yeah, that was awesome. Thank you so much. You know what? I might as well give you, we have a full week of weather, so I'm just going to throw it out there. Saturday, it's going to be 24 degrees, y'all. Ouch. Oh, oh, that hurts just to hear it. Bundle up, y'all. Sunday is going to be 44 degrees. Monday, it's going to be low of 30, high of 48. Tuesday is going to be low of 27, high of 46. Wednesday is going to be a low of 37 and a high of 54. And Thursday is going to be a low of 37 and a high of 54. So, you know, we're going to get a little bit back up there next week. Yeah, maybe Phil was lying. Phil was I mean, lying. maybe he was lying. Phil was wrong. See, and I don't, I will never trust the groundhog ever again. <laughs> See, Gwen said we probably just can't follow Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. That's all. Maybe Pennsylvania has six more weeks of winter, but New Jersey, New Jersey, no, we're killing we're it. Spring. We're doing good. I'm, I'm thinking spring and summer already. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm ready. <laughs> That's a fact right there. That is a fact. But we're going to be moving on. We have some entertainment news. We have some stories about Netflix. Again, they're just yeah, finding yeah, yeah. our way. Yes, they are. Yeah. All right. So Netflix reveals new password sharing rules as household crackdown begins. Talks of a Netflix password crackdown have been gathering momentum in recent weeks, and the streaming giant has now given some clarity on how it will play out. Netflix announced plans to update its password sharing policy late last year because the 100 million plus households who currently share accounts undermine the long term ability to invest and improve Netflix. The company says on its support page, quote, to ensure that your devices are associated with your primary location, connect to the Wi-Fi, your primary location, open up the Netflix app or website and watch something at least once every 31 days. If you do not do this, your device will be blocked. That's nuts, bro. I'm that sorry. just doesn't make so sense weird. to me. I honestly just hate it because it's like, okay, say like my parents are using it at home, but I'm using it at school. Yeah. How is that going to work? Like when my device should be blocked automatically? Yeah, that's what it sounds like. The way they're describing it, that's what it sounds like, which is bizarre. It makes no sense. It's technically still your household. Yeah. You're just here for a couple months. <laughs> Yeah, they're gonna have to. They're gonna have to be something that they're gonna have to do because I already know a lot of people are gonna start getting upset and not use Netflix because how are you supposed to use Netflix if you, you know, you can't use your Netflix if you're at school or you're going somewhere for a couple of days? You know, right? they're just gonna log you out. Like I, I looked at the, the article. It says that means if you are a university student borrowing your parents' Netflix plan on your laptop, you need to travel home at least once a month to log into Netflix on the Wi-Fi. So is Netflix uh... gonna pay for some students' flights to go back home once a month? Yeah. You know what okay. I'm saying? I understand it now. So as long as you log in once a month from that device, you can use it. For the oh, OK. Days. That's just so Barbie annoying, Bell. though. That's that just annoying. crazy. I just don't know how this is going to go down. So for people that are still using their ex partner's Netflix account, you're in, listen, you're in uh, trouble. You might have to have a little reunion. <laughs> oh, my Dang, gosh. That, that I don't think it's going to work. I don't think it's gonna work. It's not. I, I mean, don't think I'm so. I'm a Hulu girl anyway. So yeah, I've been I've been on Hulu a lot recently. It's I'm not really on Netflix. This, this, this might be the final thing that that makes people stop using Netflix. I agree, honestly. Glenn. I agree. I think this is gonna be their like retire. This is gonna be it. Like no more. They're gonna be the new blockbuster. Like <laughs> who's wow. heard of Netflix before? Like it's not happening. Have y'all ever been in a blockbuster before? Yeah. I have. I've been in a before. It was like this whole 
nostalgic thing yeah yeah there used to be a blockbuster in my town when i was like a little me kid. too yeah there was a blockbuster in my town you know what i have in my town i think it's probably the only one left in the entire universe we what? have a radio shack you have yeah. a radio shack wow when's the last time you heard of radio shack Let me tell oh you. my gosh <laughs> it's like forever yeah. there was one in my town too but it it was gone a long time ago oh so god is she's still kicking i guess i haven't <laughs> been in there since i was like a kid but i you know i always see the open sign i'm like wow okay oh my People gosh in my town. It, it's guess it's so doing crazy good. how it feels like the difference from my town see now i'm going on a tangent here but <laughs> my town coming to montclair like there's so much to do there's so much going on in the yeah town, it's just like nothing absolutely nothing nothing so all we have is netflix so netflix please please pull through it's not gonna work no. they're gonna fail with yeah. this 100 percent. they're gonna man, fail man they should retire speaking of retiring there we go amanda <laughs> so tom brady's retiring part two <laughs> tom brady's run in the nfl has officially come to an end ladies and gentlemen the quarterback revealed wednesday morning that he's retiring and this time it's for good the Tampa Bay Buccaneers star made the announcement in a short video that he posted to his social media page. Brady's made this announcement once before back on February 1st of last year. He told the football world that he was done. But of course, that retirement lasted just a few weeks as he unretired just 40 days later. Tom's contract with the Bucks had run out this offseason, but many had speculated the 45 year old could return in 2023 perhaps with the Super Bowl contender San Francisco 49ers. Brady, who played 23 seasons in the National Football League, made it clear in his video that he won't be coming back. I mean, listen, it's about time because the poor guy can only do so much. He's going to hurt himself. Don't you guys think? What do you guys have your thoughts on this? He's coming back. You think he's coming back? Yeah. I mean, he already ruined his entire, like, marriage and Oh, <laughs> else. gosh. He'll keep playing. I mean, 45. <laughs> 45 he's five more years and he's halfway to 100 that's true <laughs> you know I, I oh my god I'm just I'm just glad he's retiring because seriously like there's only so much your body can take and as hard the conditioning is and training is to be a football player in the National Football League it's it's still not doesn't matter how much training you could still hurt yourself and 45 is not 20 it's not 21 I, I completely agree he literally Divorce Giselle. Giselle divorced him because he went back to playing football. If you announce your retirement, you just look dumb for coming back. That's what I'm I, saying. Like, that's yeah, what I'm saying, Brady. Yeah, it just makes you like look like not a good person for literally ditching your wife and your kids to go play football for just for your career. Just to be eight and nine this year. That's <laughs> oh that's yes, your trophy wife, beautiful She's woman, gorgeous. <laughs> and have a terrible season i just don't get it listen yeah tom brady's the go he's the greatest of all time i think I'm, it's, I think it's just yeah season. i think it's just because he's like the longest running or whatever i think that's really just he won it. the most super bowl or uh, he won ugh. it's more the title than anything yeah he won the most you know big events but also listen i'm a jets fan i don't like patriots he was always on the patriots so I don't like Tom Brady. <laughs> okay, I'm getting real. He annoys me. So you know what? Good. He's retiring. Well, don't we remember the little? Uh, I, I don't know if you guys know when he wasn't. He, didn't he deflate the footballs? Yeah. Really? No, no, are we going to talk about that right now? Like he did. <laughs> no way. She did. We're spilling some sports what? tea right now. Whoa! Folks. This is <laughs> like a. Oh, the sports <laughs> tea is real. That was a good one. I, about that sipping. listen like we sip in he deflated the footballs so he could win you know the big game i'm not sure we're not sure it's all speculation it's all rumor very easy to you do that do though it was such yeah. a crazy day and like there's so much commotion you probably won't even really just like you know take a little pin and you don't well, even I mean, notice he definitely wow i mean i don't know actually i have no idea but... i feel like he would i just i just don't know i mean if he could leave his trophy wife and kids for football I think he would I think he would I low-key feel bad like there's so much I don't hate him because I don't know him personally right, yeah but it's just like what it's whatever you hear in the tabloids you know and you know whatever you believe it but it's time to go I that was pretty good tea I didn't know that that's yeah. that was a big scandal a couple of years ago wow that's crazy it was a huge thing and of course all the Tom Brady fans are like that didn't happen of course yeah. they're gonna defend him till like the ends of the earth 
Oh. Yeah, <laughs> when you're 45 and still in the NFL, you're washed up. Just go away. That's crazy. Oh. <laughs> I cannot imagine being 45 and still playing like such an intense game like that, like getting knocked mm-hmm. down and stuff. Like I couldn't handle that. I couldn't handle that at 22. I don't It'd know. be like you get scared. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh, you you could get hurt like big time. Like I said, your body's not where it was when you started. It, it, that's just the way it is. Not just in football, in any sport. Yeah. I, are you guys big, everyone in the room, are you guys big sports fans? Do you like football? Like, Good what question. Is your... Mine's is basketball. I'm more, I'm, I'm a Brooklyn Nets fan all like all the way, my whole family, but football, like I'm honest, like I'll probably, Oh, like I like the Dallas Cowboys. You know, I've always wanted to be a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> like so I'm crazy. that person, but I was, yeah. um, the, we were pretty good with predictions. I don't know why my family and I are pretty good with super, with the big game, you know, kind of just like predicting what's going to happen but because we had a bet with my neighbors next door and we were like oh they're, they're gonna win and they're like no like everybody thought they weren't gonna win and then the bucks won they won it was like <laughs> it's pretty that. good yeah i i have to say we're good with like like superstition maybe you know? can you hope for the jets to win next year <laughs> i can hope and then like maybe they'll win put out some manifestations like i'll that. do i'll put them in my manifestations for you amanda i, I think good things are coming really though for the jets I really do. Listen, it's laughing. Listen, she cares. No, but for real, though, you, have to, you have to think about it this way. We started off the season really strong. We won all the preseason games, which, you know, I, that made me excited. I was like, okay. Like there's something. Could, yeah, this could be something to look forward to. Yeah. And then, you know, we won like the first seven games. It was great. You know, we lost the last, like, you know, like the last little, well, all of them. But listen, <laughs> the last, like, all of them. <laughs> we had a really strong start. And I just think, you know, we, we tweak. The offensive line a little bit. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Listen, this is my <laughs> intro to sports uh, <laughs> class talking. I, I would have to. I actually have to write about Tom Brady in a uh, two hours. So, oh my gosh, looking forward oh. to that. But <laughs> enough about sports. We're gonna take a really short break, and when we come back, we're gonna be doing everyone's favorite segment. Am I in the wrong? Ooh, so stay tuned. Oh, I'm not-
Chuck E. Cheese. Chuck I don't e. know Cheese if you ever pizza. went. Oh my god. Yeah. I mean, I just went for the like one of the first times recently. You know, I never went as a kid, but I went recently. You gotta go back, people. I need to want... take a kid because I'm yeah. gonna like they're gonna ask me. You said they asked you. They just let you right in. Yeah, they were like mm. they were looking at me and they're like, you can just go. You can just go. Listen, it was a good time. I recommend if anyone wants to go to Chuck E. Cheese, y'all should go because it was, it was yeah. fun. You know, a lot of fun games. And you know what? You know, it's cheaper than Dave and Buster's because there you go. Dave and Buster's, you have to pay like twenty dollars to get like two chances to play games. But at Chuck E. Cheese, you spend twenty dollars, you. You can play a lot of games. Yeah, you can. And you can get pizza with French fries and like dip it in ranch. I'm a ranch girl. So, oh, oh my gosh. Why are we talking about this? Now I'm going to want to go to Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah, I'm I not even kidding. I'll go for real and get myself a whole pie. Oh, yeah. Me too, girl. I'm starving. Too. Me too. <laughs> I'm talking about food right now. Oh, God. But moving on from Chuck E. Cheese, <laughs> we are going to do everyone's favorite segment. Well, at least it's. My favorite segment. Same. Am I in the wrong? Join us as we deep dive into the world of Reddit and messy situations. Disclaimer, these are not our personal experiences. These are stories from Anonymous on Reddit. Are y'all ready? So ready. All right. So for the first story, am I in the wrong for leaving out, leaving my son's wedding after he denied his stepmom a mother-son dance? Ooh, okay. Whoa. okay. Let's get into this. this. Let's get into this. My son... Jordan is 27. His stepmom, Natalie, came into his life when he was 16. His mom passed away when he was 13. Jordan never really considered Natalie as his mom. He refused to let her get close to him and shut down every attempt to have a close relationship. He even moved in with his aunt months after Natalie and I got married. As years went by, they started reconciling and seeing each other more often. He invited us to his wedding, which took place days ago. We got there and the atmosphere was great. Later, when I found out that Jordan had denied Natalie a mother-son dance and instead chose his aunt to dance with him, Natalie told me that, uh, sorry, Natalie told me this minutes later and I couldn't help feeling irritated and quite upset. I decided to get up and leave and we both left. I got calls from my family after they saw me leave and Jordan called later and I told him why I left. He got mad and said that it was his wedding and that his aunt is basically a mother to him and said that Natalie shouldn't expect special treatment. I said, it's not special treatment, but it's a tradition. Hmm, okay. Besides that, he hurt her feelings for no reason other than for the sake of being malicious. He got offended and accused me of ruining his day and causing a scene. Now the family sided with him and said I shouldn't have left no matter what. Am I in the wrong? It's a lot of information. It is a lot. So let's dissect it a little bit. Um, Personally, I think- Which part? Should- dance with whoever he wants to dance with it's his wedding okay there you go regardless that's one part then there's his mother passed away so you know he of course is gonna want to dance with someone who is family maybe reminds him of his mom maybe that's his mom's sister so it's comforting for him to maybe get that chance to kind of dance with his mom not really Mm -hmm. i don't know i feel like natalie the stepmother she shouldn't she shouldn't have really taken it to heart like that like i understand she could be upset yeah he's not his mother she never will yeah. be and you know i mean listen they can yeah have a relationship and not have to dance at the wedding yeah. but I, yeah i agree 100 percent. no you're good you're good <laughs> i feel like it's his wedding like you only get to like if this is his one and done marriage like you mm-hmm. only get to get married like once like this is one day so like it's like why did you i don't know i get i guess i'll, I'll I'll support Jordan on this, but it's like, why did you like get up and leave? Like, this is your son's night. And it's like, I get it. Like, it's like his stepmom and stuff. And she's like hurt that he didn't like dance with her. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, like, I'd want to dance with my aunt too. And I mm-hmm. get that because like, then you feel like closer to your mom like that. Yeah. Um, I just feel like it was blown way out of proportion. There was yeah. some type of miscommunication in the mix. I agree. And I mean, like, as much as you are the stepmom, it's one thing to be considered that or and actually be a mother figure. If there's no connection, I mean you can't you can't fight it, honestly, you yeah. know. I mean, it's it doesn't sound like it's a situation where the stepmom is like, you know, the stereotypical, very malicious and all. But yet you're remember, you're the stepmother, you know, if mm-hmm. if he doesn't have that connection with you, like you can't you can't force that, you know, exactly. I feel like at the end of the day, it's his wedding. So mm-hmm. it's whatever he wants. You get me? It's his day. He should be happy. And 
yeah the mom the stepmom could be upset but at the end of the day like she has to be okay with whatever he's okay with it's his wedding and for his dad to yeah. just get up and leave like that I feel like that probably made him upset like damn like yeah. you're gonna just you're my father and you're just gonna get up and leave you know so mm-hmm. I, I yeah I've never understood like step parents when they feel like you know when they're the child's parents like real parents pass away they feel like they have to like step in and be the new parent like I just think like you could be dating my parent and not have to be my mom or Mm -hmm. be my dad you know and you could still be a nice person I could still have a really great relationship with you but you shouldn't try to replace them you know and I think that's really important so uh, I definitely have to side with Jordan because you know I I would do the same thing I guess I mean I get to dance with my dad at my wedding so I guess I wouldn't like, cause for me, similar experience, you know, I, I, I guess I don't know what I would personally do in that situation. Cause I already get to dance with my dad, but I don't know, maybe I would just do a break dance instead. Like, do like a solo dance. I don't know. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know, just do a solo dance or, you know, whatever makes Jordan happy dance with the aunt. I don't know. I think the mm-hmm. father is in the wrong. He shouldn't have left his son's wedding mm-hmm. and you know, that's just, it's wrong. I feel like no matter what the circumstances, you got to be there for your kid first and foremost, you know? Like, I never, this is my last thing I'm going to say about this because, yeah. you know, this is, it's kind of sad. It's a little sad. But um, I feel like parents should always, you know, stick by their kids and make them feel comfortable and not just go with, I, I understand, like, they're in a new relationship yeah. and they're happy and stuff, but they should always stick by their kids, you know? That's something I, I really believe in. So I think this dad is in the wrong yeah, I'm gonna have to say the dad's in the wrong for I this one, stepping out like that. And Reddit agrees in the wrong. All right, Reddit. Good. Okay. Good. <laughs> so moving on to our next one. Am I in the wrong for telling my roommate that speaking a language is not a personality and she needs a new one? I, 19 female, am in my first year of college living with a roommate with a roommate, Katie, also 19 female. Katie speaks three languages, English, German, and Spanish, and she makes it her whole personality. Whenever I ask what she's watching, she's watching something in another language, so obviously I can't watch it. She's always listening to music on her headphones, and when I try to bond and listen to what she was listening to, it was in another language again, and I couldn't stand it. Her friends all speak one of the languages she does, and whenever I hear them, I can't join the conversation because they mix everything. So I'm left out of their conversation. The other day, I saw that she had a new book on her desk, a Portuguese course book. I asked her about this, and she said she's taking private Portuguese classes starting in February. I told her she has to let it go that she needs to develop her personality because speaking a language isn't a personality trait and she's just boring. She got really annoyed with her. She got really annoyed with me and told me I'm a terrible person and to stop eavesdropping on her own conversations. I told her she was boring and has to fake her personality. Now she's not speaking to me. My friends are split. Some agree with me and some agree with her. Who's in the wrong here? Am I in the wrong for telling the truth? That's crazy. That is so crazy. This sounds like a, like a, like I'm just like reading it and I'm playing it out in my head and it's just like cat dog for a hot second. But like, I don't know you guys, what do you think? I'm still like kind of processing this. I I mean, I, I think that the, the, the girl who's saying this is definitely in the wrong. Like her roommate is allowed to speak other languages. She does not have to. She does not have to cater to her. Like, I have to agree with crazy. Gwen on that. I have to agree with Gwen because I'm like reading the headline and it says telling her roommate that speaking a new language is not a personality. But when I read that, I thought she meant like she's constantly like saying, oh, yeah, I speak port- I speak German. I speak Spanish. Like, oh, yeah, like, don't worry. You know, like kind of like pick me girl vibes. Mm-hmm. But she's just living her. She- hey, if she wants to watch a movie in another language. Who gives you the right to like get upset She's not about that? You. I think I'm gonna be honest. I think this girl's just jealous. Back. Definitely. Now, if she's purposely kicking her the her like the roommate is purposely kicking her out, like when they're in the middle of a conversation. Okay, that's a you know like like seeing it play out the body language and stuff. That's a different story. But girl, you just jealous because you could only speak English. I think the only part where like her roommates in the wrong is like don't eavesdrop on my conversation. That's wrong. You know, like you're in the same room. Like if you're in a double, like everybody's gonna hear your conversations. If you want a private, like go to the study room, go somewhere else where nobody will hear your. Yeah. But one hundred percent, this girl's in the wrong. Like 
I think that one thing is true though. But also I was reading it and I'm like, wait, she just said that she couldn't under really understand when she's talking mm-hmm. sometimes. So how yeah, are she Google, eavesdropping? Google Translate. It's it's kind of like fit. I think the ro- that she's mostly in the wrong, but the roommate, yeah. that one thing she said was off. I, I just don't know how speaking another language is like a personality trait. You know, like you just are, you can, you can just speak. You can just language. speak it. I mean, it's like your whole personality. You just, it's like speaking just because I speak English doesn't mean, oh yeah, I'm speaking English. English so this is my personality trait. Hey guys. Like, I'm sorry for singing I'm Selena Quintanilla yeah, and that's a personality trait I'm now. I'm jealous that she speaks English, German, and Spanish. I can only, I can barely speak English sometimes. Back. Like it's like, and I'm, <laughs> English is the only language I know. So it's like, it's I'm like now I that. can't speak like what? Yeah. It's, because, cool. it's because she has no culture. You know, she has no there culture, you go. So she she has no culture. Trait. There's no culture there. And there's nothing wrong with like picking up a, and that's what she's saying. She had a Portuguese book to learn how to speak now portuguese she's like in she's like educating herself more and more why don't you do the same thing like take mm-hmm. inspiration from that you know i i have to say final one she's in the wrong 100 percent, 100 percent. and reddit's vote in the wrong i also wish i could speak another language for real like i've always wanted to be able to speak spanish like it's so fun but like it's, it's good to too. it's useful i like to i don't like to, that's what i'm saying like i don't like to i don't say i do it's just like if it if something comes up and i can help someone like translate that's where it's like really i personally feel like oh my god like that's so cool like i'm able to help someone out but like sitting there like telling everybody and their mothers like yeah i speak spanish like okay that's different but that's not what this girl is doing do any of y'all speak other languages anybody else here speak another language no. No, I'm Puerto Rican, but I don't speak any Spanish. <laughs> no. I'm also Puerto Rican, yeah. like, and I do not know a lick of Spanish. Me neither. Like, hola, and like maybe. Me neither. <laughs> what? I mean, you know, if I'm in a situation, like, I could probably un- get by. I can understand a little bit. I got an A in Spanish yeah. one hand too, so I could probably. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah, I can understand like the base, maybe like the basic words, but like besides that, mm-hmm. does your family speak it? Or? They speak it, but they speak like. Like broken Spanish, if that's okay, like, yeah, if that makes sense. Like they could, they survive. Yeah, <laughs> like that, that's what it yeah, is. Yeah, they get by. Yeah, yeah. I would, I would love to learn another language. I think that is on my bucket list. One of my goals is to be able to learn another language. Duolingo, man. Mm-hmm. Oh, we we I talked just about downloaded that, that literally a couple of days ago. Really? Yes. <laughs> Let me know if it works out because we were talking about it the other day on r slash relatable, which um is an awesome show. If you want to check that out, you don't have to. <laughs> if you want to, it's on Fridays from two to three. Um. Yeah, but we were just talking about that on r slash relatable, you know, Duolingo does it actually work. So please let us know. A lot of people say that it does. It has a lot of good reviews. So all right, we shall see. <laughs> I guess we'll see. <laughs> but moving on, we're going to take a very quick short break. But when we come back, pigeons that are pink. Ooh, very. I'm just going to leave it at that. Stay tuned. <laughs>
guys we are back that was i don't even know what song that was honestly i was gonna try and tell you guys um uh, maybe it's take it easy it was like take it easy i don't i don't really <laughs> know a little country but... twang to it yeah. just a little bit it was oh it was called take it easy i was oh, like okay, okay. Yeah. there you go so let's take it easy we all should be taking it easy it's almost the weekend you know we got to start relaxing we're almost there y'all we're almost there but like i said before pink pigeons let's talk about it let's get into it i'm very excited my favorite color is pink i like birds so this is exciting pink pigeon found in new york and was oh okay wait now i'm not as excited it was probably dyed for a gender reveal party let's talk about it it's a girl no more like it's a pigeon a pink plumaged pigeon rescued from a new york city park may have been dyed for a gender reveal party. The Wild Bird Fund (laughs) said the king pigeon was found wandering Madison Square Park in Manhattan and was taken into care. The group told ABC7 News the bird might have been dyed pink, not a natural color for a pigeon, to take part in an elaborate gender reveal, ceremonies by which couples learn or reveal the gender of their expected baby. The Wild Bird Fund said, quote, this poor bird has had it bad enough as a domestic bird unable to find food in the wild fly well or escape predators but being a bright unusual color makes him even more of a target the group named the pigeon flamingo a nod to the brightly colored waiting bird found in wet habitats in the caribbean south america africa and the middle east and europe according to the fund they said quote psa please never release domestic birds into the wild not for weddings funerals celebrations art projects or anything yeah this is not kind of safe sad now because i love birds i have a pet bird his name is zeus Um, oh zeus i love that name what kind of what kind of bird um he's a cockatiel nice oh i can see where you got zeus okay nice small though these birds are small they're not like the cockatoos that are like okay big but you know He's cute. I love him, but I love birds. I've always loved birds. I like birds, they're funny. They Especially funny. if it's like a parrot. <laughs> so cute. Yeah. I like pigeons. Everyone's like, ew, pigeons are gross. I think they're cute the way they're just like. <laughs> I believe, I think sometimes they're with the, with the government. I'm not going to lie. I haven't wazzy. seen them in so long. Like, I haven't seen many like I used to. Something's up. I get so scared when I'm eating and they're just bobbing they're... their heads over towards me. Like, I just don't like birds. Like, no, at the beach, the seagulls. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Those are, they're menaces. Do not get me started, I, y'all. Time, I literally get so scared. Birds do not approach me. Do not they're quick, me. too. They're super quick. Once you have food <laughs> out, there's one of them, and then there's a hundred out of nowhere. Yeah. It's crazy. Don't even get me started started right now i love seagulls okay they're Uh, nice it's just you know don't feed them on the beach if you don't want to get attacked i got chased by them like i don't know how many times i i've already had to defend myself one morning buzz (laughs) two semesters ago so i'm not even gonna get into it but seagulls are great listen i love them they just want to chill on the beach just like us they love food they have they beady eyes food. though. They do a beady eyes. No. Like, what are they thinking about? That's for real. Oh God, when they side eye, gives me the creep. Side yeah. eye. <laughs> side- yeah, but I love seagulls. They're awesome. I always give them French fries. My friends get so mad at me. Why do you do that? that? That's what- oh my gosh, no! You gotta throw it when you're like leaving. <laughs> yeah, you gotta do it when you're like leaving, so they don't like happy. chase you. I try to get them like as close to me as I possibly can because I want to befriend them. I want to be the seagull queen. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, hold on. I, I'm trying to pull up a video right now. I mean, the listeners, you're you're not going to be able to see it, but there's a video of me with a bunch of seagulls surrounding me, and I need to find this for proof and evidence that I love seagulls. They honestly might as well be my favorite animal. No, oh they're not gosh. my favorite, but you know, they're a good bird. I don't know. I, I feel like they get a bad rep. Oh, ducks! Ducks are great birds. You know, you ducks. Know yeah. Oh my god, when they're like tiny, they're so. Cute they're adorable oh my gosh they're so cute they attach very quickly like if they lose their mom like their mom god forbid so cute they're all the seagulls amanda they're (laughs) all surrounding you guys that's so not i named one paul (laughs) you named one paul yeah so for everyone who can see it says this one is paul and it's this video of a seagull oh and this one's steve (laughs) <laughs> Steve. Steve and Paul, look how close they are to me. 
Liz, oh, I lo- oh, I'm gonna cry. I miss the summer, man. I yeah, seagulls. I love pigeons. I love all birds, you know. And poor pigeon that got dyed pink. I mean, why yeah, it's not safe. That? These people, gender reveal parties go crazy. No, now. people die like animals, like really, really bad. I saw one at the mall. It was a, it was, they were puppies though, and they were like giving them out for the holidays at Garden State Plaza in Paramus. Oh my god, I was like ready to call the police because it looked bad. Like, I just she they took it out of the bag and I was like, oh, like, people die animals like crazy. And gender reveal parties, I've seen it actually a lot. Very common. It's just really, it's not safe. I saw one in person when I was like walking. Yeah. And I saw like all the confetti go everywhere and they just left the confetti. They left the confetti there. And I was like, it's like, oh, it was a girl for sure. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. I don't I don't know why people do that. I mean, I'm so happy that you're excited for Yeah, just do it in a safer, like less hazardous way. Cause you know, you you are hurting like wildlife. I'm scared this is gonna be loud, but I have a goose honk. So prepare yourself. Oh <laughs> anyway. Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> i'm so sorry i love birds but yeah psa y'all please don't die animals any color no don't please. it's not safe it's not safe and it, and it makes me sad yeah and it makes me sad but moving on yeah so we've got a, a suburban school worker who was charged with stealing oh my gosh 1.5 million dollars worth of chicken wings from a district what? Wow. The food service director for an impoverished, impoverished Illinois school district is accused of stealing one point five million dollars worth of food. And it was specifically chicken wings. Vera Little Liddell, 66, worked at the school district for more than a decade. The court records a, the court records accused Liddell of ordering more than eleven thousand cases of chicken wings from the school's district's food provider and then picking up the order in a district cargo van in that case to all the wings eaters in the room drums or flats i flats. say drums no, Wait, flats, yeah. flats. no mm-hmm. drums always got some weird stuff in there like i don't know what's going on with the drumsticks well, i love drumsticks i just feel like because it's easier to eat them that's true I- like the flats of the two separate bones yeah sometimes your fingers get a little messy oh, I'm sorry, but man. drums amanda you are right I you guys don't like that. drumsticks no they got weird they're stuff so part of it you just can't trust like there's a little fat on it <laughs> and then, like, you get it in your mouth and you're like oh you get like, that's gross that is gross i mean i am a wing connoisseur i love all wings I'll yeah i love drumsticks. chicken wings but you know, the flats. I didn't even know they were called flats. Yeah, me neither. Flats. This is my girl, though. I- well, yeah, right. 11,000 <laughs> cases of chicken wings. Girl, where- she had cravings. She had some serious cravings. 66. Crazy. She really same walked same out of that uh di- the food district provider and she walked out with sunglasses on like a total boss. She's like, yeah, I just got 11,000 cases of chicken wing. <laughs> Let and me like, get some sauce on the side there. How many you got? <laughs> and like she did this for like a decade or so like that's what i'm assuming right oh, she's an icon that's wow oh uh, she really just went for it. i can't eat wow 1.5 million dollars worth of chicken wings listen wings are expensive i always want to they them. are like 12 bucks for six wings i can't wing stop that. is crazy yeah. I would love 1.5 million dollars in chicken wings. Last me a week, yeah. Respectfully, I love. <laughs> all right, all right. Speed round. Everyone's favorite chicken wing flavor. Mine has to be buffalo, obviously, with blue cheese. Mm, honey barbecue for me. Ooh, classic. Especially classic. the one from Applebee's. Right, but if it's salt and pepper, some do. Some places do salt and pepper. Oh, I've never heard of that. It's really good. Yeah. Mine has to be the same thing as Amanda. Buffalo with blue cheese. Always. Yeah. Always a combo. Buffalo always. Always. I love it. I don't know. I, I am a lemon pepper girly. Ooh. Two forever. Lemon pepper is pretty good. I had like a mango habanero one before too. It's kind of that's kind of that's kind of good. That sounds really good. I'm getting the dry rub a little bit too. Yeah, yeah, they're good. Those are Do you, really good. would you dip it into a sauce or by itself? No, just dry rub. Oh wow. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, those you know, at first I was like, hmm. But, you know, now I'm starting to, like, come around to the idea of, like, the dry rub wings. I, see, yeah. I personally like it with blue cheese. I just, like, I love blue cheese and, like, wings are, like, my excuse to eat it. Blue cheese. Have a spoonful of blue cheese. <laughs> <laughs> That's vile. But, yeah, you know, wings are great. I love them. 
All right, this next story, I don't even, I don't even know. I'm. Really- this is a lot of different things in one. <laughs> yeah, right. We're talking about wings. We're talking about birds. Now we're talking about Satan Con. I don't even really know how to. Talk I thought about that said this. Santa Con. I thought that said that too. I also thought it said. Whoa, Santa that took Con. a dark turn. It did take a dark turn. <laughs> So who else would report this story other than the one, the only Fox News? A group of Christians is pushing back against SatanCon 2023. SatanCon is an event scheduled to take place in downtown Boston that is being touted by the Satanic Temple as the largest Satanic (laughs) gathering in history. Detractors say the temple is, quote, using the supernatural to manipulate people, though it's built itself as a non non-theistic non-theistic, non- non-theistic mm-hmm. group y'all okay that does not believe in the supernatural okay so that's uh confusing dave kubal ceo of intercessors for america told fox news digital that they've been tracking these folks for a couple of years his organization of half a million prayer warriors takes a three-pronged <laughs> approach to resisting and exposing this satanic temple with quote news prayer and action Satan Con 2023, which is scheduled oh April my gosh. 20th in Boston and marks the Satanic Temple's 10 year anniversary. Okay, of- great. Definitely just have this convention like a couple weeks after Easter. That's okay. Wow. That's bold. I didn't even think about that. <sighs> That's but- just crazy. I, I, I'm still on the thought that I thought this said Santa Con. Right? <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, if anyone's interested, April 28th to the 30th in Boston, listen, that, um, I would be terrified. I'm terrified. Like, go. it's giving Krampus vibes. Yeah, I'm scared. And I don't normally get scared. Me neither. That's a lie. I get scared a lot, actually. And it's in um, Boston. So yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, Boston. They're like, hey, yo. Is that more New York? I- it's, I, yeah. It could be confusing, honestly. I wonder what they talk about. Like, what do they probably. do? Like, what are the panels? True. I, I, yeah. Because it's like a religious there. type of. See, yeah. I feel like something like this is concerning. Because uh, some people like, okay, maybe they're just weird, but then there's people who like take this a little too seriously and probably want to go out, you know, causing really bad things to happen. You know, that, this is, mm, I don't know. Yeah, I, this is scary. I'm I'm nervous. I'm looking it up right now. I'm not really getting a lot of pictures. So maybe pictures will uh, come after. I wonder same. if pictures are even allowed. That's true. Like they got some secret stuff going on. Like, if there's no pictures, it. has it happened in the past, or is this like the yeah. first like Satan come? It, it, it was sold out last year, actually. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, we have a quote here. So, quote the Salem, Massachusetts-based Satanic Temple, which claims to have more than 1.5 million members worldwide, denies belief in a personal devil, saying its mission is to quote encourage benevolence and empathy among all people. Reject tyrannical authority advocate practical common sense and justice and be directed by the human conscious to undertake noble pursuits so you said salem yeah oh mm-hmm. so that's even scary that's where the witches that's are. what i'm saying because she said boss we said boston but boston. salem yeah. i don't know it, to another level. It, that, it's a whole nother level because the <laughs> those witch trials that's that's not some hocus pocus stuff this is real like oh it's my god boston. interesting yeah, honestly, mm-hmm. I, I'm scared. So let's move on to the next one. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. All right. So Portland man files a lawsuit against five fast food spots and claims each served him dead. But oh, gosh, this is my this is like the big my biggest. Ick. Yeah, this is my biggest I don't know. Ever. How am I going to get through this? OK, producer Lara's note over here. She says, Alexa, play Bugs by Pearl Jam. All right, let me see if you have- I can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> Alexa, not Alexa, Amanda. Amanda playing Pearl Jam. Um, so a local man has filed lawsuits against five fast food restaurants in the greater Portland area within the last year and a half, claiming that he found a dead bug in his meals at each different business. So he found them in all five. Um, oh goodness. In the lawsuits, the 63-year-old William Smith states that McDonald's Taco Bell, Jack in the Box, and two Starbucks locations. It claims that they all served him food containing an insect carcass approximately 0.3 inch. Okay, that's a lot of detail. 0.3 inches long <laughs> and varying dates between July of 2021 and January of 2023. Smith is seeking $50,000 in comp- compensatory damages. Um, 
that's violent. I don't know. They they all did it. I, I don't know. All I, I mean, five... that, that's kind of suspicious all five de- destinations there was a point three. In- okay first of all really did we have to put like how long it was no. i mm, listen have you guys ever had any um fast food horror stories anything you found a surprise i i have i mean every time i go to fast food it's a <laughs> horror story <laughs> but i will say if i ever ever found a bug in my food i would I would never. Oh no, no, no! I would never leave my room ever again. Oh my gosh! I'm being being so for real right now. I hate, hate. I don't hate a lot of things besides Tom Brady and bugs. (laughs) Just kidding. But real though, I don't like bugs. There was a stink bug on me the other day. I was screaming. It It was was stink bug. Yeah, I was in the target. Oh, I would have screamed with you. Like, (laughs) I was like, no shaking that's so um, oh my god in your food though that's insane nope. i <laughs> nope, 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 nope. oh my god i just got a memory no stop stop i'm getting the chills thinking that i'm like imagine biting into it no ew. no you know what i found once in my fries a screw a screw what? i found i and here's the funny part i think i still have the picture it was a burger king it was a large fry I literally swallowed those fried whole. I was like eating them. And luckily I didn't like just chug down the rest at the end. There was a screw. And we go back and the lady's like, oh my gosh, we were looking for that screw. Cause they were oh. in the middle of serving food. They were fixing like the light on top of like where the fries are. I was Girl, like, you better got money for that, right? Let me- she was like, she like was ready to give us a whole gift card and everything. She was like, so, so upset. Like she felt so Did bad. Did you get the gift card? Yeah, but I was just like, so, oh my God, it was so bad. I was like, and I had just finished the fries. That was horrible. But bugs, like, this man is really, like, invested in getting his $50,000 because it was five times different locations and two Starbucks. I don't know. I mean, do you think he's faking it? It would be concerning, I feel like, if it was, like, a certain, like, time period, but it was, like, over, what, a year and a half? That's what he exactly. I don't think it's it's it is a long period of time, but it shouldn't be that common. No, and the same I size know. bug too. How convenient! It was a bug all five times, same area. I'm oh, I was showing sure pictures. But need, like, proof. Pictures? I don't want to see a picture. Oh no, yeah. When that happens, like you've got to take Ooh. a picture of it and show it to them. Like the that's why you always check your food before you leave the drive through or the or like leave the 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 restaurant whatever because sometimes they'll be like oh you're faking it it's so annoying but yeah you you have to like always check your food before you leave mm-hmm. that is a fact I mean you know I get the occasional hair that isn't mine and oh, oh, you guys that's happened to me before it's so gross I just I just don't disgusting. eat that fast food for like months that is disgusting it's uh, so gross I'm actually gonna I'm gonna get sick. Mm-hmm. We actually can't even talk about it. But when you pull the hair out of your mouth, no. Oh, oh uh, no, 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 no. I think my cravings are gone for Chucky. E. Yeah. At this point. <laughs> I was so hungry before. Right. Oh this, man. This is disgusting. That is so gross. Yeah, I'm moving on. Speaking uh, of yeah. People suing. Yeah. Suing we, we More. Man rejected by woman sues her for three million over trauma from finding out he is only a friend. Oh. Yikes. So a man who is rejected romantically by a woman has launched two lawsuits against her for failing to improve the relationship and for the emotional trauma he suffered and other impacts on his life. Mr. K. Koshigan. There you go. Yeah. I'm just going to. Koshigan. Filed one lawsuit against Miss Nora Tan Shu Mi in the magistrate's court for $22,000 in damages for purposely breaching an agreement to improve their relationship. The second was filed. Okay, so the second lawsuit was filed in the high second court lawsuit. for $3 million for the emotional trauma he allegedly suffered after finding out that she only saw him as a friend. According to court documents later obtained by the CNA, he also claimed that her actions had caused damage to his stellar reputation, followed by trauma, depression, and impacts to life over a 24-month period. Listen, I don't think you've got a stellar reputation. Stellar reputation. The fact that he considered, like, he said stellar reputation. This sounds like an M.I. in the wrong, like... It really does. The, Reddit post. the fact that he's, I just think it's like, okay, fine. Like I understand emotional damage. Like that's a big deal. And I'm glad that it's something that's taken seriously in law enforcement, but 
I mean, $3 million because someone thought you were just a friend. You're really going to spend that money on a lawyer and your time on that? I just feel like it's not yeah. worth it. In my, in my humble opinion, that's... Ow, I just shocked myself. In my humble opinion, that's kind of embarrassing. Like, you're really going to sue someone for $3 million because you got friends. $3 million. Yeah. Jewelers. And are you going to win? Like, how do you give evidence and stuff? You know what I'm saying? It's just very... I didn't even know people could sue. You can. Like that. You could sue for um emotional, damn it, emotional trauma. You can, but I mean, not in this on. situation. She could. She could have let him on though for like three years or however long. Like, but still, we all get let on. You know what? I, mean? I feel like it happens to everyone. Like you get friend zoned. Yeah, and it happens to everyone. People. You get friend zoned. I mean, that's the it's the rite of passage. You know, it's kind of how things go i mean that's a little creepy if a guy was like that obsessed with me that he's suing me for yeah that's dogs, where it's concerning like he's it's suing incredible. because here's the thing okay so let's say he quote unquote wins the case so what happens you exactly. think you're gonna get her back like love. you're i'm gonna lock you in my dungeon and your mind forever type Ew, of thing like know, what so creepy. what do you like that's just a little weird you know i think this i think he's in the wrong in this if we're talking from like Oh, this was a Reddit post. If this was a Reddit wrong. post, he's definitely in the wrong. I mean, now I need to know her side. Like, I need yeah. to know what she was doing to this man that he feels like he was traumatized, you know? <laughs> no, I seriously. I, I, I mean, listen, I don't know, but knowing how men are, I feel like I feel like this is just him <laughs> being, like, crazy about the fact that she doesn't like him and taking it to, like, crazy levels. He's probably been, like, harassing her. Yeah. I don't know. That's just that's just what I imagine. Period. Yeah, this is an all women show. Mm-hmm. As it, sh- yeah, as it, sh- as it should be. As it should. We're, we're slang. We're Wait, slaving. We're slaving. I'm sorry. Every time she says slang, I have to just like, slaving. <laughs> we're slaving. We're slaving. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, that guy's kind of. There's no reputation there. I I feel like not to be mean, but it's he's kind of being lame. You know, like he has to sue her. For being mm-hmm. traumatized. I see. Yeah. Then it retracts everything I've ever said. And I actually feel sorry for this man. If he actually. Yeah, I feel bad that he was if he was let on and like, you know, yeah. he got friend zone. OK, like, yeah, I feel bad for you. But three million dollars. I think you have something better to do with your life. Than I think everyone's dollars. been let on and they're not crazy enough to sue the other person. Like, I feel like it's just like whatever. Yeah, whatever you move on. There's seven billion people on this earth. You'll find somebody. That is, you know, that is very true. You know, do y'all believe in soulmates? We talked. We about talked. This the other oh, day. yeah. We we went on a, on a whole tangent on this last week. I always felt like that, like there was somebody like on this planet, like made for like everyone type of thing. But yeah. Then, like I became more open minded to everything and realized that it's like. If you guys can make it work, it'll work. That's yeah, true. Like, yeah. But what if that means they were also your soulmate to begin with and you just had like challenges? Like twin flame type stuff. Well, as long as you overcome those obstacles and those yeah. then I feel like it is meant to be. Type mm-hmm. of thing. But yeah. If you don't, and you struggle in the beginning, that's supposed to be the honeymoon phase. Obviously, there's something off with the miscommunication. Yeah. Very, it's the communication. Very true. I'm a firm believer in soulmates. I Same. Feel like there is someone out there for everybody, and also that you can. I think everyone could have multiple soulmates. We talked about this. We did. There's friendship. like friendship soulmates and like family soulmates. Platonic platonic soulmates you know, people even in relationships like you could have multiple soulmates i mean not at the same time <laughs> no not at the same time but you know your first love and yeah. your, your first baby breakup you know things yeah. like that you know there's there's a bunch of things but, yeah you know, i i hope that he, she doesn't have to pay him three million dollars and i, I hope, hope so that he finds someone who doesn't friend zone him you know yeah like, everyone deserves love Y'all, yes, you know, very true. Everyone deserves love, and I just hope that this guy, you know, finds it. I hope so too. She's out there, or he, you never know. Uh, he'll find his person. But yes, thank you guys so much for listening to the morning buzz. It, it's been a great show, you know, can't complain. I'm just waiting for the clock to tick down. We got four seconds, three, uh, two, two, one. All right, it is nine o'clock. I was pulling teeth there, y'all. <laughs> All right, you've been listening to The Morning Buzz on 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. Thank you guys so much for listening to your morning news with us. Uh, it was a great show. And awesome. you guys can listen tomorrow, too, if you'd like, to the Friday Morning Buzz. Those are our people over there. Yes, we've we got love- our Friday Buzz people. Yeah, we love the Friday Morning Buzz. But we will see you guys next Thursday. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. You're tuned in to 